morning, and welcome to the United Lodge of Theosophists of Washington, D.C. We're located in the metropolitan Washington, D.C. area at 4865 Cordell Avenue in Bethesda, Maryland. Our website is www.ultdc.org. We may be contacted by email at ultdc.org and by telephone at 301-656-3566. We meet every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for a talk on a subject presented by a student of Theosophy. Roundtable readings and discussions are also held at the Lodge on the first and third Sunday of every month from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. The Declaration of the ULT. The United Lodge of Theosophists was founded in New York City by Robert Crosby in 1909 for the purpose of redirecting the Theosophical movement back to the unadulterated teachings and writings of Madame H.P. Blavatsky and William Q. Judge, co-founders of the Theos Theosophical Society in the 1880s. The ULT of Washington, D.C. is one of many lodges located in North America, Asia, Africa, and Europe. All of these lodges are connected together by two fundamental concepts, which are the Universal Brotherhood of Humanity, uh, excuse me, the Universal Brotherhood of Mankind, and the Altruistic Service to Humanity. A key policy of this lodge is independent devotion to the cause of theosophy without identifying with any particular theosophical organization. Disseminating the fundamental principles of the philosophy of theosophy and the demonstration of those principles through application and practice by its students is the work that must be performed by each lodge. This lodge contends that engaging in this work brings about a truer realization of self and a more profound conviction of universal brotherhood. The Lodge further maintains that involvement in this work also develops a spiritual vehicle or basis among its students for working together. The ULT considers all people who are engaged in the true service of humanity to be theosophists. This is regardless of race, creed, gender, condition, or organization. There are no external barriers to inclusion in the ULT. This Lodge welcomes all those who are in accord with its declared purposes and those who wish to prepare themselves through study and otherwise to teach and help themselves and others in the pursuit of self-realization and the unification of mankind. The objects of the Theosophical Movement are threefold. One, to form the nucleus of, the, of a universal brotherhood of humanity without distinction of race, creed, gender, caste, or color. Two, the study of ancient and modern religions, philosophies, and sciences. And three, the investigation of the unexplained laws of nature and the psychical powers latent in man. The subject of this week's talk by another student of Theosophy is Goals of Evolution. The subject of next week's talk will be Rounds and Races. And today's reading is from the Bhagavad Gita and page 31. Krishna, both I and thou have passed through many births, O harasser of thy foes. Mine are known unto me, but thou knowest not of thine. Even though myself unborn of changeless essence and the Lord of all existence, yet in presiding over nature which is mine, I am born but through my own Maya. The mystic power of self-ideation, the eternal thought of the eternal mind, I produce myself among creatures, O son of Bharata. Whenever there is a decline of virtue and insurrection of vice and injustice in the world, 
and thus I incarnate from age to age for the preservation of the just, the destruction of the wicked, and the establishment of righteousness. Page 36 and 37. Even if thou weren't the greatest of all sinners, thou shalt be able to cross over all sins in the bark of spiritual knowledge. As the natural fire, O Arjuna, reduceth fuel to ashes, so does the fire of knowledge reduce all actions to ashes. There is no purifier in this world to be compared to spiritual knowledge, and he who is perfected in devotion findeth spiritual knowledge springing up spontaneously in himself in the progress of time. The man who restraineth the senses and organs and hath faith obtaineth spiritual knowledge, and having obtained it, he soon reacheth supreme tranquility. But the ignorant, those full of doubt and without faith, are lost. The man of doubt, the man of doubtful mind, hath no happiness either in this world or in the next or in any other. No actions bind that man who, through spiritual discrimination, hath renounced action and cut asunder all doubt by knowledge, O despiser of wealth. Wherefore, O son of Bharata, having cut asunder with the sword of spiritual knowledge, this doubt which exists in thy heart, engage in the performance of action. Arise.